great summer of the exciting time. I love the build up to Easter. What I what I love this year, probably uh, more than most years, is just the sense of people wanting to get involved. So it's not about what we can receive at Easter, but what we can give. Okay. So please bring in Easter eggs. Okay, you can leave them here. No, I'm, I'm joking. No. I'm really excited. We, we've got a couple of teams who ask for uh, people to sign up. Let me help run some of the, the things that we've got going on as a church leading up to Easter. And we've had like 36 people in one group, 35 in another group. Uh, I know the team will come in and do a mock up of the Easter walk. Such an exciting time. But I'm excited that we are here to serve. That this is not just about what we can receive and that we can come down and be part of, but that what we can actually give. I really pray that Easter. Will just be a time that impacts the hearts of our community. That's what it's about. One who came, who offered his life as a ransom for me. And I really love that heart of Easter. I pray that you are, you are not serving in some way, find some way to serve. Uh, it's, and we just, we can, if we can serve people who, sometimes we call them the CEOs of church, Christmas, Easter, and every other occasion. Um, it's great to have our community come because people feel obliged at Christmas and Easter to be in church. What an opportunity just to serve them that, you know, it's just not just a one-off. That Christ came that he can be with us today. So this morning, if you've got your Bibles, I'm going to be reading from Matthew 21. And to be taught on Palm Sunday. Uh, I really are glad you're here this morning. Uh, we've had a bit of that reading. Thank you, uh, Cory. I would have asked you to read it. The entire thing, but I'm, re- I'm reading it here this morning from Matthew 21. So you can scroll in your Bible, slide up if you want. It's called the Royal Welcome. When they near Jerusalem, Jesus sent two disciples with these instructions. Go over to the village across from you. You'll find a donkey tethered there, her colt with her. Untie her and bring them to me. If anybody asks what you're doing, say, the master needs them. He will send and he will send them with you. This is to fulfill the story of what the prophet had said. Tell Zion's daughter, look, your king's on his way, poised and ready, mounted on the donkey, on a pole, full of the pack animals. The disciples went out and did exactly what Jesus told them to do. They led the donkey and colt out, laid some of their clothes on them, and Jesus mounted. Nearly all the people in the crowd threw their garments down the road, giving him a royal welcome. Others cut branches from the trees and threw them down as a welcome mat. Crowds went ahead and crowds followed. All of them calling out, Hosanna to David's son. Blessed is he who comes in God's name. Hosanna in the highest heaven to the king. As he made his entrance into Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken. Unnerved people were asking, what's going on here? Who is this? And the crowd answered, this is the prophet Jesus, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. All of the story, it's a great story. And honestly, just a few things on the story is Jesus makes his entry to, to the Passion Week. I don't know if you've ever, I don't, I don't know who your favorite characters are of the Easter story. Uh, but in this one, there's one character that I think we forget. And that's the little donkey, okay? And I've always kind of wondered, what would this donkey, okay, if donkey for a talk, um, I wonder what he would be telling his friends about his version of Palm Sunday. Uh, I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but what went on in his mind as he's going there? You know, it was such a normal day, and I was busy swapping flowers with my tail, you know, lazing around, eating some straw, kicked him on, you know, the usual kind of things. And then all of a sudden, some people came, and they were speaking to my own. I don't know what they were saying, but I heard them say this. The master needed me. I mean, of all the donkeys around here, they couldn't find something else. I mean, there's my friend next door, and he's a really good runner. Um, there's Arthur across the road, and you know, he doesn't poop that much when he's walking into town. Um, but they needed me. I was that special that he needed me. I was critical. Out of all the donkeys, he chose me. Without me, he couldn't actually do it. And so then we went to off. I was a little bit nervous. I was a little bit worried. And then they started doing something strange. They covered me. But not just with smelly blankets, but their own coats. All they were so soft and warm and clean. Mm, they smelled so good. I was that important that they wanted to put all their own clothes on me, their garments. And then this man got on me. And as I started to walk into town, the most wonderful thing happened. There were people. They started coming. 
bits and pieces and eventually there were huge crowds and they started putting these branches down so that my feet would be on soft ground. They placed all their coats so that I wouldn't have to work or walk on the dirt. And they were singing. I could hear them singing. They were singing for me. They were calling me a king. It was the best day of my life. I mean, why were the people cheering? And placing palm branches and coats down. Was it because of the donkey? Eh? Oh, you guys are clever, eh? You guys are so clever. It was Jesus. You can learn a lot of the story. I just preached a few things of this this morning. It's amazing you've been at a lot of Palm Sundays, but this really just stuck out to me. And as you look at this, the story is as it unfolds. The first thing is this. God has got a plan for your life. Because it's easy to forget that God has got you for you. Think of that just for a moment. It's easy to forget that God has got use of you in a particular plan. Even when you don't think he does. I mean, that donkey was just living his life, right? And also he gets dragged off. He gets set up. the morning he's busy eating grass. He's busy sitting there doing nothing. A few hours later, he gets cheered by crowds. I remember there was a time in my life where I was living my life in my path. I had my plan. I was going along. I just uh, finished school. I decided I'm going to become a chartered accountant. I've shared this story before. But maybe you don't know. But I'm going to become a chartered accountant. Started studying. Um, going, doing well. And God all of a sudden started tapping on my shoulder and going, have you ever asked him what he wants to do with my life? And I remember that was like a nerve-wracking time. I've got my life planned out. I've got my whole game plan right there. This is what I'm doing. You know, I've been going to church. I, I was in a church in Durban. I was a Christian. I followed God. But I really follow with all of my heart. I remember that weekend when God said to him, and he challenged me, and he came up with this challenge. He said, will you be prepared to lay down your integrity for him to do that? Because you've got your plan. What is God's plan? Have you ever considered what he wants for you? I remember that weekend when God stepped and he spoke so clearly about what my future should be. Sounds like that donkey in our lives. God has got a purpose for our life. And some of us don't even realize that. We haven't even thought about it. I don't know if you've noticed in scripture, but there seems to be this gap. And we've got to watch out for the gap. You know when you come into a relationship with God, where God calls you to his purpose and he shows you his favor. You give your life, you say, God, I'm mean, following with all of my heart. And maybe you get baptized and you do all these different things. And then you get back into the routine of life. Right? You sit there, God, what next? And some of you are nodding your heads. You know exactly the gap. Moses was a young man when he fled. He'd be 80 before he's brought back. He'd be 80 before he's actually brought back to lead Israel. Abraham, I'm going to make you the father of nations. And he waits. Eventually, he's like, Sarah's already old, but now she's really, really getting even older. You know, he actually says that in scripture. He says, you know, she's very old, God. This is going to have to be a miracle. Paul spent a number of years, a number of years before he was sent to preach it to the Gentiles. After he came to faith, before he goes down into the surrounding nations. A number of years. The disciples, I love that. They see Jesus ascend on high and they're sitting there waiting. The angels come to him and say, you know, what are you guys doing? Go, you know. And they get told this by Jesus, wait in Jerusalem. There's the gap. And there's some of us can lose heart when there's a gap. God, you've said this. God, you've promised this. God, you've called me. But when is it going to come to I actually wrote this, this question here. When was the last time you felt of use to God? Just you know, an internal question for yourself. When was the last time you felt of use to God? Get you to really just change your perspective. And ask and please God, come, step in. Step into my life. So often we can see get lost in just living our own paths and our own plan and our own way. That we don't let where we are now, the moment that we're in, 
determine what God will do. This verse is a verse which we, we love to quote. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. The Lord. Do you know that word plan? If you look at the Hebrew word, it actually means concrete. It's, I've got something of substance for you. But to paraphrase it in my own words, it says this, your temporary now is changing and I have something physical, something that is eternal. That this world and the life you live in is going to change. The plans that you had, that you had developed, and the plans that you had put into, in, into play, those are going to fail you at some stage. And sometimes they won't, but you'll never be destroyed. How many of you have ever made plans and then those plans have gone in a completely different direction? Eh? All us older people, so the young ones uh, still my plan, you know? I mean, I've heard some of your stories. God, what are you doing? Because you're sitting in this now moment. I've heard some of your stories. And they, you know, I've had the joy. We've been there. It'll be nine years in June. I've had the joy of hearing you going, I don't know what God is doing. And, you know, all this talent and all this gifting and all this calling. And I haven't seen it come to fruition. But now I look back nine years later and I have to remind some of you, remember where you were. Look at what God has done. In such a short space of time. Yes, it's taken a couple of years, but when you look back now, you see God's hand in it. It's interesting that when God turns around and says, I have something concrete for you in a world that is changing and, and temporary written to Israel when they'd been taken into captivity. And all the false prophets are going around and telling everybody, you know what? God's going to come and redeem us. He's going to take us out. Don't settle down. You know, keep your stuff close. He's going to take us out. And you had old Jeremiah who comes along and he says, guys, we're going to be here for the next 70 years. Plant your fields. Let your kids marry. Put up your houses. But I know the plans you have for me, Lord. I know the plans. God has a plan. We need to be careful of the gap. We can lose heart in the gap. We often let the temporary moments rob us of the eternal. God's plan is far greater than your current moment. I don't know what your moment is right now where you've been questioning God for a while. God, you have said and you've promised, but I'm not seeing it happen. He's far greater than that current moment. I mean, Paul is on his way to kill Christians. He literally was. He's going out and God steps in. Peter was catching no fish and sitting there trying to catch fish alone, even when he leaves after Easter, when Christ is dead on the dead on the cross and being put in the tomb, Peter goes back to doing what he does. And still, he's a terrible fisherman. God steps in. David was tending sheep out in the fields, and God steps in. Matthew was counting taxes. God goes up to him. Jesus goes up to him. Calls him. God steps in. The donkey was living his life and God stepped in. I'm going to remind us this morning when life seems meaningless, God can step in, so don't give up. You are purposed for His story. And that story is all about His will, always. And this was just a donkey doing its own thing. God steps in. It was that important. The next thing is remember who you carry. I mean, I love that little story and it was called Poetic License there. You know, this donkey must have thought he was just the bee's knees, you know. He was going in and everybody is cheering him on and putting their coats and waving their palms for him. 
But it wasn't because of him. Do you know why? It was because he 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 was heavy. It's easy to forget we carry Jesus. You come to faith in the relationship with Christ. It's easy to forget that you carry Jesus in this life. I think some of us and too many of us in churches have lost that impression. Now, do you know Lion King? I want another one part in Lion King. Um, Simba's trying to, to gain his role so he can be like his dad, Mufasa. Um, and he keeps, he, in, in the movie, he's going and he's trying up this little rule, this little rule, and his dad comes up behind him. <clears throat> and as he opens his mouth, his dad roars, and all the animals scatter. Sometimes we think it's our role. But it's the one who roars on our behalf. I was just reminded as I read the story, we, we, Christian, you must not forget who you carry. Remember that you carry Christ. This was the downfall of Saul in the Old Testament. He started doing things in his own strength. Here's the man set aside for God's purpose. And he saw it unfolding in his own life. Time and time again, he starts taking matters into his own hands. He's told to go wait for Samuel and then the sacrifice will be made. But he doesn't. He starts to sacrifice himself. And time and time again, he starts thinking that it's his role, not the one who rules on his behalf. Don't forget who you carry. I also love in this story. Think about the one that we carry, the one that we have to be faithful to. Imagine if somebody came and asked you for your donkey, okay, or your car. Christ has got use of your car. God asks something of you to give your time, your talent, your testimony, your child. And I was just thinking in this story. I mean, these owners of this donkey were quite willing to let him go. It's the master call. I think for some of us, we battle letting go. We battle to let go. We have to remember that every blessing we have is because of the one that we carry. The people wave and worship, not because we are the donkey, but because of the one that the donkey carries. And this is a good reminder, this last thing that stuck out with me. A really great reminder of the story of the donkey. And we all... When I think of Palm Sunday, I always think of the words Hosanna, the leaves, the palm leaves, and a donkey. Jesus coming in on a donkey. See, the most beautiful stories in Scripture are often the small ones. The most beautiful stories in Scripture are often the small ones. I mean, it's the woman who reaches out to grab the hem of Jesus' robe as he comes past. It's a beautiful story. In the midst of this crowd, his hand comes out and touches, and Jesus says, who touched me? The disciples are a bit like, what are you on about, Jesus? This is, there's, there's a lot of people. No, somebody touched me with intent. It's that small story, that one small act. It's Mary pouring perf expensive perfume on Jesus' feet. And everybody ridicules her. What a waste. What a waste. Jesus says she'll be remembered for this. It's the man standing as Jesus stands outside the temple. A man comes beating his chest and he says, he uses these words, God have mercy on me, a sinner. The, it's the woman who go to the tomb. They're going to preserve the body. They meet a risen Savior. It's the small stories and the small acts that, 
gigantic human footprint. I think too many of us want the parting of the seas, right? Want the parting of some of your family members. <laughs> um, or it's the preaching to the thousands, you know? Or if, you know, instead of cleaning the streets here in Richards Bay, don't give me the cleaning of the streets in Richards Bay, God. You're far greater than that. I want, I want the big stuff. I'm reminded that this morning that it's the small things that are just as loud and make the story beautiful. That little donkey carried the savior of the world. Yet he played a very small part in the greatest gift of love. We have a part to play. Even if it means just carrying Jesus short little while. Reminded of this moment, and I know there's many of you that can become despondent in your faith because you've been faithful with the small things. I want to remind you, continue being faithful in the small now moment. Those who pray and serve, I mean, I always, I know, always say, I'm terrible. But I always say, you know, coffee is not a spiritual gift. Pouring tea and coffee on a Sunday is not a spiritual gift, people. Um, but you know what? Wake some of you up so you can maybe stay through the sermon, okay? But I always have to remind us that it's not about the pouring and the tea and the coffee, it's about the relationships that God can use us. He puts us into connection with each other. To be able to serve somebody else, to be able to sacrifice. And the serving team, they get you half past seven in the morning, okay, on a Sunday, okay, to come and serve, to set up tables and, and make sure that the coffee is ready and make sure that the cups are all set up and do a little bit of decor and there's putting little tags in the back of the chairs and you know, we pray together. There's a whole lot of stuff that happens. And they seem so small and insignificant, but they are great. I remind those who are faithful in serving and giving and encouraging. Continue being faithful in setting up. You know, faithful in befriending the same people who don't know Jesus. Faithful in prayer. Those of you who are faithful in knitting, I know some of you have got a ministry like that. I want to remind you this morning, don't give up because you think your part is so small. Because you think you cannot do what others can do. That you cannot have the same huge impact. I know for many of you, you sacrifice daily to do the small thing. Don't lose heart. You may have a small part to carry the Savior in the most beautiful story like that donkey. Don't let the gap of what you think your plan should be and what God is calling to you to do in the moment now. Don't lose heart when you're sitting there thinking, God, you You've called me to this and I've been faithful for so long. When is that going to come? God in his timing is something that we're faithful to do. As we finish this morning, I'm just going to read this prayer here. Over you. I pray that you will never, ever think that God has got no use of you. You may be like that donkey in a stable living their own life, but God has got a moment when he is going to call you to great significance. He is going to use you and he asks you to be faithful. I pray that you will never think God has got no use for you. I pray that you will never forget who you carry. That 
every blessing, everything that you have that you just have won is in you and through you. Lastly, I pray that you will never lose heart in this small thing. You know why all these things are important this morning? It's because that little donkey for the briefest of moments met Jesus. For the briefest of moments, he had Jesus on his shoulder. When we serve, we be faithful in the small things. We realize that every blessing we have is actually Jesus on his shoulder. And we get to know who Jesus is. And we have the privilege of carrying him to the world.